Continuing with our um, discussion of cartography, um, all map making requires some elements of what we call abstraction, which means, in a way, simplifying. Um, abstraction is a, another term for simplifying. And every map requires some simplification. The world is an infinitely complex and diverse and rich environment. And a map is a simple, stripped down representation of that. So there's always going to be some simplification. Simplification can occur as a matter of selection, making a choice about what features or items are actually shown on the map. Classification, by which similar items are grouped together and called one thing. Uh, simplification, for instance, um, simplifying a forest, um, which is full of trees and simplifying it down to a simple polygon called forest. Um, exaggeration of some sort, making um, symbols especially brighter than they would otherwise be or making contrasts larger in order that they become visible. Symbolization, choosing um, symbology that represents something real with something abstract. Um, and also displacement, smoothing, and enhancement are other forms of abstraction that may be necessary in order for a map to convey its message. Abstraction is not um, a synonym for deception or lying, however. Abstraction should be done only to the extent that it makes the truth of the situation that's being shown in the map more visible. It shouldn't be used to hide anything or to deceive the person viewing the map. So although many of these words have a negative connotation, um, in, in a correctly produced map, they should all um, be only employed in order that the map becomes clearer and the truth of the map becomes evident. Um, I would like to discuss and present to you several types of mapping at the, with their formal names. And you've probably seen enough maps to recognize each of these types, but they do have formal names. Um, the first one, it, which is common, is called a choropleth map, uh, an uncommon name. Um, in, in this type of map, each area on the map is represented with some symbology representing what is within that area. Uh, a simple example is this one, the population density in the Philippines for each province and each different population density gets a different color. And you probably are very familiar with this strategy for mapping, but it is called a choropleth map and it's uh, very commonly used. Um, there's different ways in which the uh, colors can be chosen in a choropleth math map. In this case, um, there's a kind of an arbitrary user-defined set of ranges for each color. Um, commonly, um, choropleth maps may have um, equal intervals where of that where every 10 units of whatever's being measured or shown is is um, represented by a different color. That would be called an equal interval map. A choropleth map is, by uh, definition, which I didn't say before, representation of numeric data. So it's a it's a representation of numbers, um, and each of the each of the features, generally polygons, will uh, will have a number associated with them. So it's a it's a numeric representation of data. Um, another type of choropleth breaking um, into, color rain, into color zones for choroplething is to do something called quantile mapping in which every color doesn't have a, isn't part of an equal range of values but rather each color represents an equal number of cases. So, the, so if there are 40 um, features in the, in, the, uh, in the map and we want to have four different colors, the ranges of numbers will be designed, will be cr created in such a way that every color represents 10 of our features. 
and uh, that can um, sort of balance the color range on the map since we'll have about the same amount of yellow, red, orange, and blue, for instance. Um, but it'll, it may tend to, uh, e the quantile mapping may tend to create very um, unusual intervals. Like one interval might be 1 to 2, and the next interval might be 2 to 30. And, uh, but, but so, so there's always trade-offs in choosing whether to use equal interval or quantile mapping. Um, another type of mapping, which is uh, uh, fundamentally different, is called isopleth mapping. And it is, again, a fancy term for something you're familiar with. Um, an isopleth um, is a way in which um, continuously varying data can be shown with lines. Uh, the most common form of isopleth map is, uh, is elevation contours. So they're, they're used for phenomenon, as I said, that vary continuously and smoothly. For instance, uh, elevation, temperature, pressure, population density is a possible, um, could possibly be represented with isopleth mapping. You're probably very familiar with uh, this type. What it is is we have elevation, a continuously varying property as one moves across this space, and lines of equal elevation are connected with lines. That is called isopleth mapping. Perhaps you're also familiar with um, this one here is a temperature isopleth weather map. And in this case, um, all of the temperatures um, are represented, um, all the equal are areas of equal temperature are represented by, uh, by a continuous line which connects points of equal temperature. Um, for point, um, oh, excuse me, there's also another form of mapping that uh, can show um, can show the density or the the numeric distribution of some property in a map. And it's called a dot density map, and co very commonly it's used for population applications. Um, I should have an example of that. Hopefully, I have one shortly. Another example of mapping um, that that is possible in ArcMap and and is and is provided for us is something called a graduated simple map in which the um, magnitude of the property is represented by the size of the symbol that's drawn. And um, here I do have an example for this one, a visible example. Um, in this case, the number of telephones per person or per thousand people in each province of some country, which I don't know what it is, is represented by a, a telephone symbol um, with the higher um, phone density represented by a larger phone symbol. This is called a proportional symbol map, which is, uh, which is av available and commonly used in ArcMap. Um, another type of map, a little more sophisticated, is something called a flow map. And a flow map is, uh, sh is, is something that shows um, movement of a particular property from one location to another. Um, a good example of flow map, uh, flow mapping, is this one here, this same um, unknown country um, in which we show the migration of people from one district to all to other districts in the country. And the thicker the bar, the larger the movement of people. So in this case, it seems that the largest movement of people is uh, from this province is to this province and a smaller movement of people from this province is out to this province and I guess the movement to the rest of these is uh, negligible. That's called a flow, a, a flow map. Um, so those were some type of maps. I'm sorry I don't have a dot density map after I discussed it. A dot density map would, have, uh, would be a polygon oriented map but each polygon would have random dots placed in it, and there would be more dots placed randomly in that polygon, making a darker, denser color for larger values of a particular property in that map. Okay, enough of the abstraction um, and discussion of, of some tougher topics. Now I'd like to uh, show you um, the parts of a map.
which we've already discussed somewhat already. Just thought this was a nicely represented um, map or a map to discuss maps. Um, this one does have the latitude, longitude, graticule, has a title, in this case inside the legend, um, the data categories, data source is always important, a date, um, a scale, perhaps a discussion of the projection if that's important, a north arrow. So this is a very traditional um, type of map layout with colors for population density um, and um, names for each of the countries of Africa. It's a very common map. Um, I think that I'm going to have to skip this map. This is considered to be one of the first and still the best um, maps. It shows it's in French, which complicates matters a little bit. And uh, it does show the, uh, I, I might as well describe it. It does show the uh, progress of Napoleon's army on the uh, Russia campaign of 1812. The width of the line represents the number of soldiers in his army. And from left, in, in the brown is the approach to Moscow. And then the failed siege on Moscow occurred. And then going back in the other direction in black is the number of soldiers um, who actually pr um, retreated. And it's very dramatic. Um, the uh, losses to Napoleon's army during this campaign. And this was pretty much the beginning of the end for Napoleon. But it's uh, brilliantly represented um, with both the amount of soldiers, the location, um, time. And this bottom graph here shows the uh, temperatures that were uh, present at each point along the march. And the temperatures uh, were, it was a winter time campaign by the time it got well underway and the temperatures were a major factor. So this is a very interesting map. Um, here's a map of um, vegetation types across the, uh, across the world. And um, I'm going to leave it up to you as one of your exercises for this week to pick one of the next or two of the next several maps and comment on them as to how well prepared they are or how useful they are. I have a problem with the number of categories in this map, that's for sure, and other things as well. Um, here's a map that shows the, uh, the 2008, I think it was, or somewhere around there, um, lake effect snow event that happened um, right about this time um, in a number of years ago in which there was uh, as much as 24 inches of heavy wet snow that fell in mid-October um, in western New York. And uh, this might be, a, this is a map from the, from the newspaper. Um, here's a map that shows warnings and watches across the whole and, uh, and statements and advisories across the whole USA. I'll let you to make, make your comments on this one as well. Um, here's another map that shows warnings and watches. I'm, I'm picking on the National Weather Service a little bit now. Um, and finally, oh yes, uh, th so you yeah, two or four maps you can discuss. And of course, watch out for water that may be on a road during a rainstorm, speaking of weather.